Okay, our next speaker is, uh, again, Dr. Parks, uh, talking about significance and innovation. Okay, thank you. Um, so as I brought up in my previous talk, these are the criteria upon which reviewers will, will score your grant. These are called the score criteria. They actually give individual scores to each of those based on this scale, a scale of one, one to nine. So one is exceptional, nine is, well, don't get a nine. That's my advice. Um, and the, the scores that they give to these actually are not discussed at study section, but you'll see them in the summary section. But two of those, the ones I'm going to talk in this presentation are significance and innovation. Um, and they actually end up being part of the o overall impact. What the overall impact score, it's not the mean of the individual scores that they give to these criteria, but it's something that, that uh, how different reviewers rate each criteria. So as I said before, that significance, investigator, and approach, I would say, are the most important. And innovation and environment, um, less so. But they can definitely have an impact. Um, and just to let you know that, so these get individual scores of one to nine, or the, the I'm sorry, the overall impact again is scored on this as one to nine, and then um, you take the mean of all the scores in the study section, multiply it by ten, so your final impact score could be ten to ninety. Just to, and typically that's percentiled against all R ones at that study section over the last three meetings. So the percentile score ends up being the important one, and that varies. So. So innovation, what is innovation? Um, so innovation can be new concepts that you're challenging a new paradigm or dogma in your field. Or it can be technical, new reagents, new assays, new technologies, etc., new approaches. The one thing about innovation, the NI rules spell this out, is that a grant does not have to be innovative. Now they say that, it's ne actually never made sense to me. Because we're supposed to be doing something new and doesn't new kind of imply that it's just being innovative? Um, that said, it's just, it, it ends up not being a major review cri criteria, but it can be a big hit, big plus. That's to say that if the reviewers think that you just have a moderate level of in innovation, you're using established techniques, you're using established models, but you are pushing the field forward, it's, I don't think it would hurt you. Um, but if you really come up with new new dogma, incredibly interesting new technologies, like if you happen to be writing a grant where you first proposed polymerase chain reaction, that might go over pretty well. And um, so it can be a big plus. Also, for early stage investigators, you really get no break here. The other thing about innovation that I've noticed over the years is how it's reviewed. So you have to write a section on innovation, and typically what the applicant's assessment of their innovative strengths are in their proposal does not equal what the reviewer sees. And I, 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 if other people who reviewed grants, so it's, this just has been my experience. So what is my advice on writing the innovation section? Keep it short and keep it realistic. That's it. I wrote a grant uh, last fall which did get funded, thank you very much. This is my entire innovation section, which was routinely, it scored very well among reviewers. But the point of it is not what the words are, but that it's only four lines long. And I, I, I don't mean to sound cynical, but after reviewing grants for some, so long, I just have just not seen the innovation section to be uh, something that really weighted in my evaluation of the grant. So another bit of my advice is don't waste space on writing the innovation grant. Waste, use that space to, to improve your experimental plan and approaches. As well as this section, uh, significance. Significance, on the other hand, ends up being an incredibly important part of your application. The NIH is trying to make this more important with this concept of premise. Um, uh, so the significance is is what we used to call the background part of the grant, and 
And typically I would say that you would use about one to one and a half pages for this section. And what should be in it? So one is that you're going to critically review the literature and provide a clear premise, something that the NIH is asking for. So I would recommend that somewhere in there use this word, premise. Just drop it in there. Um, one is that there's no limit on the number of citations. So that part of the grant has no page limit. And if I review a grant and they have 20 citations total, I, I get concerned. So typically in my grants, I have between 150 and maybe 220 citations. And I listed full citations. And the other is, is when you're writing the significance section, rely on the original papers and timely papers, and less so on reviews. Why not reviews? If I'm reviewing a grant and you're basing your premise on what was written in a review, I think you're lazy. You have not gone back and evaluated the original work. You're relying on someone else's interpretation of that work. Now, I don't mean to sound harsh, but that, I think, is reality. I, and I have seen grants and that just rely on reviews, and it has not gone over well. Um, so a big part of the significance is that there are gaps in the field that you're studying, or maybe flaws in what people have been thinking, such as if there's dogma in that field. And it says you would point out gaps that your work ideally is going to fill in. And if you disagree with something, don't be afraid to say it. Um, but you should explain how and why you're going to correct this. And, of course, you would only talk about things that you're going to be studying. Right. Uh, be diplomatic. There's a good chance that you're going to be citing papers of people who are reviewing your grant. So you don't want to say, you know, Dr. X has been getting this concept wrong throughout his career. But now I'm here to correct it. Um, this actually happened to me many years ago. I used to be at Washington University in St. Louis, and a, and a clinical fellow training with us developed a new model in pulmonary hypertension, and he did write stuff like that in his grant, that other people, the way they evaluated it, the models they created were all wrong, but he's here to, to correct this whole thing, and it did not go over well. And it's good, like, if to provide graphics like a cartoon or some scheme just to, to tie in concepts you have if that's relevant to your type, type of project. One thing, uh, and I sort of touched on this a bit, but I'll stress it here, is limit the, your discussion to things that you will study. And this goes back to some things I was saying in the previous talk. You don't want to put things in the reviewer head that they have to remember as they read their grant that is not relevant to your grant. I will give you an example. I was reading an R01 application several years ago, and the applicant had a paragraph, a sizable paragraph, based on transcription factors controlling the expression of whatever protein they were looking at. And they had it in detail. I said, okay, I have to remember these transcription factors because there's going to be studies on it. There were no studies on it. And so I wasted that precious bit of short-term memory to something that wasn't necessary. And it kind of ticked me off a little bit, you know, so uh, just a little bit. But so the, the point is, what you want to do is overall keep the application very focused to the topic you're talking about, particularly in the significance. You should show in here some enthusiasm for what you're studying, but, but keep it tempered. And... Um, as has been talked about is in, in other aspects, is to know your audience so you can see who would be reviewing your grant and, and other people in the field. And then some of the limitations that you could run into is that this is needlessly long, it's not focus, you know, reliance on reviews, you keep saying excited every other sentence, and, um, and then in today's thing, because I'll touch on this again, is that you have a poorly developed premise. So one thing is, how do the reviewers evaluate significance? So one thing, significance is not related to the disease or cellular process you are studying, because after all, all of those things are relevant and important. All right. Also, it isn't that you're going to make a, do something that's going to lead to a new drug that's going to cure a disease, because basic science research can definitely have an impact. 
and uh, this, this is something the NIH has been stressing quite a bit for several years, is that solid basic science is something they want to support. But significance is, if the work you're proposing is completed, that there will be, something will be improved, either knowledge, technical capability, clinical practice, etc. That your work is going to advance this specific field. And does it, is your project addressing some important problem or barrier to the progress in the field? So that is still related to this previous point that you're going to make an advance and move a field forward. And um, which is really what this one says, that, that you're, again, uh, completing the aims is going to make an advance. So that's the big thing of significance. And just to make it clear, significance is not your field. You know, if you're studying mechanisms of cancer metastasis, that is a clinically relevant, important health concern. But that is not going to drive the significance of your application. In that case, it was your work going to provide us some new knowledge and understanding or how to treat metastasis. Um, so again, it's relevance to human disease is not required for significance. So you can be discussing how cell cycle regulation is controlled into the sophila and get funded from the NIH. So that there has been this misconception on that. that Significance meant that it has a translational or clinical impact directly. And as I said, that's not true. The NIH does want to fund solid basic research as long as it's going to have an impact. And this is the NIH's own world, is to seek fundamental knowledge about the nature and behavior of living systems. Right? That, that's a key sentence. Um, so the application does not necessarily have to show the potential for clinical um, impact. However, if the applica applicant says, my work is going to point the way to a new therapy, I think they have opened the door to now that the, we can evaluate their grant on that potential. So it's one of the most common things that, well, the study sections I serve on are disease-oriented study sections, so we're going to look for translational impact. But if translational impact is something way down the road for you, you don't necessarily have to say that that's where your impact's going to be. And that's because basic research takes time to pay off. Right. And that's actually, I believe, a, a quotation from NIH policy on this. So furthermore, so the evaluation of significance is now, the NIH has been using for about two years now this phrase premise. It has to be supported by a strong premise. So a proposal that's descriptive or derivative that won't advance a field is not significant. And if you're an early stage investigator, your significance section will be evaluated the same as it is for us as established investigators. So what is premise, this thing? So I've, I have wondered about this since this concept has come out. So basically, it's an assessment of the foundation of the, the project. And um, in it that you're going to describe the strength and weaknesses of prior research and data, both yours and others, uh, used in support of your proposal. So the non-italic words there are from the NIH instructions. Um, describe how your research will open up any, you know, address weaknesses or gaps, and scientific premise is reviewed as part of this, of the significance criteria. And it's actually, they're saying, if, if the premise is considered to be weak or a failure to address it adequately will affect the overall impact. And so I've been talking to people who recently served on study section, and they said, yes, this is, do you serve on study section? And yes, you have to address premise out front. And do I have another point here before I go on to my cynical aspect of this? Um, my perspective on premise is something that we've always been doing anyways as part of writing a grant. We're talking about what is the background? What is the literature? Where are the holes? And these are things that have been part of grantsmanship, I mean, ever since I was, was a youngin starting out last century. And um, so my only advice here, or my key advice in writing the significance section is discuss the rationale, the background and the rationale for what you're doing, what advance you're going to make, and in there somewhere, use the word premise, right? Would you have good? Right. 
So one thing that confuses a lot of people is significance of the grant versus the overall impact of the grant. And they're actually very similar, so this can be confusing. But significance is scored independently than overall impact. Overall impact is the final score of how your grant as a whole. So it integrates all five score criteria. But the first point up there is actually very similar. And the, those, those are NIH words that I've used in making this slide. Significance is the focus on relevance and likelihood of making a meaningful advance. Impact is likelihood of making a sustained, powerful influence on the field. To me, that's saying the same thing. It's just that impact, when they give you your impact score, they're also going to integrate all the, uh, they're going to integrate aspects of you, um, your approach, environment, etc. And then uh, finally, this is just, um, a guideline that the NIH was putting out about a year, year and a half ago on these new variables that they're wanting us to address. And, and some of them, numbers two and three, really have to do with experimental design, so that will be talked on later. But the big one, they've, big one they've been hitting on is this concept of premise. And premise is basically significance. So this is my last slide on this. So I thank you for your attention.